Hey guys, welcome to the Stuff Your Face show here on the Pop Culture Network. I'm Stuff Your Face Bob, this is Stuff Your Face Steve. Woo! We're here to bring you the latest in food news and recipes. Hmm. Um, use bacon. <laughs> when in doubt, try to use corn uh, oil versus uh, the peanut oil. What about canola oil? No, no, no. You want to be as unhealthy as possible. Huh. Um, the other stuff, it just gives me gas. Nice. Well, good to know. All right, now that that show's done, how about the Video Game Loser Show? Oh, okay. We can do one of those, too. Yeah, whatever. You know, why not? Just one of those things. As always, I am your host, Dirt, along with Lord Killen here. We are gearing up for C2E2 coming up this weekend. Yay! Woo! Yay! We're in... <laughs> you started excited, and then you yeah, just... Yeah, uh... yeah. Uh... No, it'll be all right. It'll be fun. It'll be nice to get out of here and just be totally drunk all weekend, so... Hmm. So you're not actually going to do any work at no, C2E2? No, 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 no. Hmm. I don't do that. I see. I well. look around, and then I go, this is cool. What, what are we drinking? Huh. All right, well, it'll be an interesting uh, show one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, either he gets arrested, and we leave him in Chicago, oh. uh, or he just uh, urinates on somebody. Uh, yeah, Which that, that, almost that, happened last year, that happens, actually. That'll happen. So. That's guaranteed. All right, well, let's get into some of the video game news of this past week. First up, have you had problems getting on Xbox Live? No, because yes, actually, because I don't connect to it. Ah, well, also, New York State is now removing sex offenders from Xbox Live. <laughs> so that's you know your other problem right there. Man, Megan's Law is just getting out of hand. You can't do anything. <laughs> they called it Operation Game Over. 3,500 accounts have been removed from various gaming services, uh, including Xbox Live, but also uh, Apple, Blizzard, Electronic Arts, Disney, Warner Brothers, and Sony. Um, Xbox Live was the only service explicitly mentioned, hmm. but more than likely, of course, they mentioned Sony, so they mean the PlayStation Network, they mentioned Electronic Arts, so they're probably talking Origin, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, so. I guess that makes sense, but that sucks, because look, okay, look, let's say you're in a situation where you were 18 and you were dating a 17-year-old, and you guys were in a relationship and you had sex, and then somehow her parents flipped out on you, and now you're a sex offender. Bogus. However... Just wait till you're married. However, problem solved. If you're one of those people that you know went out there and touched uh, children and stuff like that, uh, you don't get Xbox Live. How about that? How about you don't get Life? I think people who uh, touch children just uh, they should just be killed. End of story. Yes. <laughs> and you can't play Xbox Live. And you can't play Xbox Live when you're dead. Which could be worse. I don't know. All right. Next up, Hiro Hirokazu Yashuhara. You know, your old friend. Butchering this, this name. Uh, Co-creator of Sonic the Hedgehog is now working at Nintendo. Oh, you turn coat. Uh, he worked at Sega from uh, 1988 until he joined 2K Sports in 2000. 2002, he moved to uh, Naughty Dog, where he was the senior game designer for Jack and Daxter and Uncharted, which are high-caliber games as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to Namco Bandai. Uh, for a few years, and then left there last month to move to uh, Nintendo Software Technology, which is the in-house studio that works on games like Mario vs. Donkey Kong and Metroid Prime Hunters in the past. So no word yet on what he's working on for the future, uh, but definitely he comes with a very strong pedigree moving into a unit that's known for high-quality software. Um, so. This guy's been passed around everywhere. Something's wrong with him. <laughs> Or, you know, because Sega went cool. out of business and no, no, stuff. No. And, uh, you don't get passed around that much unless you have some quirks. And I'm pretty sure he licks the office chairs. I'm just saying. Mm. I'm just saying. That's why he gets fired. Or transferred or whatever they call it in the gaming biz. Game over, man. Right? Huh. Whatever. But you think that's a problem to lick office furniture? I mean, no. Not, not ours. But, like, if you go around, like, an office building and just randomly lick all of it. Oh. I mean, you get a five-guy lick rule, okay? You can lick up to five guys' chairs or stools or tables or desk, whatever. You go beyond that, you cross the lines. And where did you used to work? Just here, baby. You, you got day. some weird office etiquette. I'm just wondering where it came from. That's not weird. That's you got to lay some rules, okay? Look, if you're going to be in civilized society, you have to have rules. And one of the rules is you can only lick up to five people. Yeah, but why five? Why not six? Or why more than four? So, because thanks to handicap laws, we have to be able to count. <laughs> you have to be able to count 
One, two, three, four, five. Some people don't have a second hand. Jerk. Oh, oh. Well, I see that. Yes, I'm the insensitive one here. Good to know. Hey, we're just staying compliant. <laughs> All right, let's move on, shall we? Shouldn't have asked. Uh, Starhawk, the Warhawk uh, sequel, now has a new update. Uh, they released a trailer showing off that they're working on jet bikes and mech jets. Oh, boy. If you remember, Starhawk is the game that uh, allows you to... Uh, move in between the ground and the sky, move into space platforms, all in this uh, massive uh, multi-online player shooter, um, real-time strategy type game. So adding some new uh, fun things for you to play with in there. Really fun game. It's been in beta for a long time though, and they keep doing public betas and private betas and public betas. And did you play it? I did. I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed Warhawk, which it was based off of as well. So. Good stuff. Liar. I, oh. <laughs> okay, bad stuff, I no, guess. Just, you know, whatever. Uh, Child's Play. The charity from Penny Arcade is now moving into new territory. Uh, they are also going to be um, supporting domestic abuse victims. Uh, in the past, they had basically just been taking games and gaming systems to children's hospitals, um, cancer treatment centers, places like that, and giving children, you know... Uh, just stuff to play with, but now they are uh, moving beyond the hospitals and expanding out and going through the uh, domestic violence shelters. Oh, great. Here, uh, play some violent video games. <laughs> they might screen the games before they give them to kids. I would think it'd be a bad idea to give somebody, you know, a, a PSP and a Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories, you know. Even though that's probably what the kid plays all the time at home anyway. Yeah, I mean, really, we are going to give us some Bible games? Really going to be upset, okay? <laughs> Dude, Barbie Horse Adventures. There's nothing worse. That's than, all you need. There's nothing worse than being abused and then having to play Bible Adventures. Just saying. Or My Little Pony. Pinkie Pie's they're birthday not, they're party. They're not helping. They're not helping. HBO Go will be on the 360 next week for Comcast customers. Um, there was a rollout update to the uh, 360 dashboard. If you had things like, I think it was UVerse. Um, or Comcast, you found uh, Xfinity updates for Comcast customers. I don't know if you've used yours. I got since DirecTV. Done the, oh, okay. Uh, I've got the Comcast cable, so I get the Xfinity, and basically the uh, on-demand service will now run through your 360, so I can move my 360 to a different TV in another room, and I've got my on-demand features um, more or less the same as what I have on my TV running through the Xbox. High definition, looks great. Uh, works flawlessly, and Comcast has said that the uh, streaming your video through the 360 will not work against your um, network caps, your bandwidth caps. Huh. So uh, right now, I think 250 gigabytes of data a month is their their cap that they uh, try to keep people from going over, and this won't work against it. So you can stream all you want through your 360. Good stuff. How, and how, I wonder how long this is going to take before we're just using a single service, because this is getting ridiculous. I like the idea of it going through the gaming systems. I mean, instead of having a separate, you know, set-top box. I don't like to use my gaming system very much because I'm afraid it's going to mess up. As you all know, these machines well, yeah, are kind of sketchy. 360s sometimes. do have a tendency to melt down just by turning them on. PS3s can just start flashing yellow and red. I mean, mm -hmm. it just happens. I, I'm afraid to use them, overly use them. Yeah, but our PS3 is on almost all the time. Because, I mean, we stream everything that we watch on the TV through it. And it uh, hmm. works really well. But I'm, I am on my second PS3. So hmm. that tells you something. Yeah. Flawless. Right. <laughs> Next up, a Rockstar North employee posts their CV online, uh, showing some of the games that they've worked on. And they listed Grand Theft Auto V with an October 2012 release date. Uh, it has since been pulled from his LinkedIn profile. Uh, but basically, uh, he's been working on uh, different games like Big Mother Truckers 2, Pit My Ride, Cartoon Network Racing, um, Supercar Challenge, NASCAR The Game, 2011, and now Grand Theft Auto V, he says. Hmm. And he uh, listed it for October 2012. Now, of course, people saying this guy worked on Total Crap Games <laughs> up before this. How do you get a job on Grand Theft Auto V? Um... Maybe he just made the title screens, you know. And uh, <coughs> some people say even if that is correct that he did work on it, 
Um, him saying October could just be, you know, he just made a guess. Guesstimate when you're working on your resume. You know, October seems a little soon. Like, they usually be pulling out these ads, especially for a big title game like that. Well, except I'm wondering, uh, you know, E3 would be the time. Maybe they'll announce it coming for Christmas. I mean... Yeah, but, I mean, just think about it. When they did before, <coughs> they had advertising everywhere. You couldn't, like, if you were in a bigger city like Chicago or New York, they had signs and billboards everywhere you turned. Um, like, months and months ahead of the game just to get ready. Well, here you go. E3 this year is going to be June 5th through the 7th. So they can announce it in June coming for, uh, you know, the end of October to hit that Thanksgiving Christmas period. I mean, uh, it does it does make sense in that you know, regard. I'll probably buy it because I was excited for 4 but then I like 4 was great a lot of cool things happened but you had to maintain relationships with the people and mm -hmm. that killed the game for me it made it not as fun and it wasn't like you could just get really good with the people you had to be good with the people and that made it irritating so if this game ends up being like that then I'm going to be like <laughs> well on that game because I can only play so long, man. I, I got to play for a couple hours tonight. Maybe next week I'll have a couple more hours. Right. I don't have solid blocks of time. So if your game's not going to be uh, easy to pick up and drop off, like, because I played four for a, like a couple hours into it, and I was like, great, I'll come back to it. And then I realized, oh, I was supposed to keep up these relationships, and I forget what's going on. I'm like, I don't want to play anymore. No yeah, it's one thing I like about Saints Row. Uh, three was that it was much more linear. Mm -hmm. It was a lot easier to keep track of. You had you finished one objective and there's the next objective. It, you did have the ability to fork off and do other stuff on the side, but Which for I the did. most part, you could pretty much just follow a straight line through the game and just stick to the main story. And that was that's good for someone like me who may go two weeks before I get a chance to play again. Yeah. You know. And the game was awesome. Just saying. I want to play it again tonight when I get home. Actually. <laughs> And it's got Tron bikes. Oh, nice. All right. Next up, there are new Skylanders characters available. You can go buy them in stores now. Uh, Warnando, Camo, and Whamshell are the new three guys that you can add to that. As well as there's a new uh, iOS game, Skylander Clouds, I think it's called, uh, which is now available. When you buy your Skylander characters, they come with a little card that has a code. Uh, you can use that code to play with the... Uh, Characters online in an online game. Now you can type in that code in your uh, iDevice and you can play through the new iGame. Hopefully it'll be coming to Android soon. Well, I saw some Skylanders on clearance on one of the major retailers. What? Yeah. That makes no sense. It was a four. It was a three pack and it was like fifty nine ninety nine. Now twenty nine ninety nine. I was like, what? It must have been the game pack. With it, the yeah, three. it's got to be the game. Maybe like the PC version of the game or something that didn't. Wasn't as popular. I thought it was kind of odd because considering how uh, popular this thing was. Was on clearance or on sale? Twenty dollars off is kind of no, because they they actually did that quite a bit um, when it came out. Different promotions, buy it, get a twenty five dollar gift card. I'm pretty sure half off. I'm pretty sure it said clearance. Hmm. And where at? I, I can't remember. Man, you better. I've remember. been trying to think about it all day. I just can't remember where I read that. But when I saw it, I was like, because I have it for the 3DS, and I would like to buy it for the PS3 and make it because you can do co op. Um, on you can know, you, PS3. Can you use those characters across yeah. the platforms? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, and they'll keep their stats with them as you go across platforms. Well, then why do you need... Because I, I want the software on the PS3 so I can play it on the big screen with the kids and co-op. Jerk. Children. I like to play it. Wait a minute. I better stop myself and rephrase that. Look, you're not going to be allowed on <laughs> Xbox Live talking like that. <laughs> Moving on. Last story. Uh, Shadowrun returns on Kickstarter. Um, let's see. They, uh, you know, Kickstarter has been the, the the place to go for you know gaming. Um, I think pretty much everyone has figured out now that uh, if you want to make a game, you're going to take it to Kickstarter. That's just going to be how it's done from here on out. That's pretty much. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know of any other source that has been this popular. Uh, for making games as Kickstarter has become. But Shadowrun Returns popped up on Kickstarter. They set their goal at $400,000, uh, kind of similar to the uh, Double Fine Adventure. Um, as of right now, they have made $758,819, which is just about double of what they were looking for. Uh, and they still have 19 days to go. 
So about a third of the way through their time and double their goal. Um, originally, they were going to just put the game out on PC mm -hmm. and have different formats working. Now that they've hit that goal, uh, you know, almost double their money, they're saying there will be a Mac version. They'll work on Linux version as they go forward. And then, of course, more money, bring in more developers, better music, things like that as the money keeps going up. But they've hit the goal, so the game is green light and ready to go. All right. So I guess I guess the news for all you people out there who want to make some money, go and uh, I don't know maybe just pick up pick out some old forgotten title of a game and put it on Kickstarter. So you're gonna remake it and put some ridiculous goal of how much money you need so you can actually hire people to do it for you and you'll probably win. But bringing it, back all these old stupid games. I mean, Shadow it just, Run it really? What? What's wrong with Shadow Run? That game wasn't all that. It was all right. Maybe back in the day. Yeah, well, that's good enough it's for... It's embarrassing now. Okay, well, they're not going to bring back the original... <laughs> Why not? Game. <laughs> that game was gonna, awesome. They're going to remake the game. Uh, but regardless, they do have uh, levels, pledge levels, $10,000. Um, basically, the uh, FASA Corp will come to your town to run a tabletop game of Shadowrun for you and five of your friends. He'll even bring some snacks. Uh, three people paid $10,000. You better bring something for $10,000. <laughs> to have them come and run a game with them. That That probably would be a lot of fun. Because that's going to have all the miniatures and, you know, the setup and everything. I don't get it. $10,000 so you can play some tabletop game? Uh, you know, hey, we're talking about people looking for friends. $10,000 to, to have some fun friends for the day? Do they do they come with a crew? <laughs> do you get, like... They come with dancing girls. I mean, you better get something good for $10,000. <laughs> Just to play a game? You can do that free down at the local game store. I mean... Well, yeah, but this is going to be a different level of player oh i'm sure like like uh you're gonna be beyond the bathing you know so so they will have bathed uh they are people who uh are not incontinent uh so you know they can hold it in until it's time to go so you don't have that problem you have to worry about um these are not people with annoying girlfriends uh mm -hmm. so you know you keep moving up that for ten thousand dollars you're at the chain of good gamer friends hmm. Hmm. and that's where it and do you sell tickets like, it's $3,000 if you want to come to this. And that way you profit a little money, too. Hmm. Hmm. Seems like a good idea. I'm wondering who the three people are. Sticker. Like, I'm wondering if, you know, like, um, Jack Black maybe is one of the $10,000 people. He's like, you know yeah, I, mean? I want a party. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I want friends. All right. All right, that's going to do it for now, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then when we come back, What's His Face over here is going to have a list of your new game releases. Woo. Stuff to look forward to, Yay. so stay tuned. Munch, munch, munch. Mm. Uh, this episode brought to you by <laughs> Smart Food Popcorn. It's good. Kind of like crack, but without the side effects. And they don't actually endorse this show. Oh, but they could. No. They could. Well, they could. Yes, please do. All you have to do is send us lots of free popcorn. All right, so this week, uh, your second week of April, right after the Easter holiday, we have just a few tiles, about 11 of them, not too many. Uh, sadly, there's not a lot of retail stuff coming. You're going to get a lot of eShop downloads games this week and a couple PC. As far as major retailers, only a handful of tiles this week that I care about to tell you about. Hmm. So, uh, up first with the 3DS, we have a game called Spirit Camera, The Cursed Memoir. Now, this is basically a horror action game where you use a camera. It's kind of like... Uh, like a cross between Resident Evil and then like uh, 
a game like Myst, where it's kind of a puzzle action y kind of game. And basically, you're <laughs> taking your camera and you're pointing it at objects, and through your lens, you're kind of seeing like a uh, ghost come out of the images and stuff like that. And it's kind of a really freaky game. And I'm pretty sure it's going to scare the bejesus out of you and give me nightmares. Wait, there was a game, Fatal Frame, on PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Do you remember that? Yeah, but I never played it. Because you had like this haunted camera that you would walk around the town and take pictures and ghosts would appear. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly the way it Although this one, this one is augmented reality, right? Like you're moving the DS around and taking pictures? I don't know. It didn't look like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well then this is stupid. Well, it's 3DS. It's in 3DS. So you're seeing the images coming out of your screen. Like, oh. And sadly, I can't tell through the, the you know, watching the trailer for it because, like, oh, this is a 2D version because you need to play it on your 3DS to actually see it in 3D. I'm like, well, that's stupid. <laughs> how am I supposed to know how cool it is? So that game is available. It's going to be at 39.95. It's going to be a major retail release, and you should be able to find it at your better gaming stores. What about your worst gaming stores? Those you might get secondhand. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's right. We can't afford it. Uh, <laughs> up next for the 360 uh, is a digital download. You can get a game called Fez. Hmm. And it is uh, kind of like a little quirky platformer game that stars like a little white creature with a bright red Fez. Well. Woo! Platformer. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be one of those really dumb, uh, jumping around little dumb creature games. And it's a little white creature. Kind of sounds like a little Kirby, huh? Kind of. So you don't like little dumb creatures? Is that what you're saying? Not anymore. I'm over it. Hmm. Is that like Oh, that's me. Made out of ice. Um, yeah, so you get that digital download. Uh, Fez might be good for the kids, or if you're just bored, try it out. Uh, let's see. Up next for the 3DS off the eShop, uh, we got a <laughs> another game. It's a, it's a puzzle game called uh, Kazal's Corridors. And I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. K K E T Z A L S. Quetzals. Anyways, this game is is a platform puzzle game. Basically, it's like, do you do you remember that uh, Japanese game show where like the wall would come at you and the people would try to like make oh sure yeah, yeah yeah like hole in the wall or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay, it's basically that, but it's like a Tetris piece, and you're like sh changing the shape as you're falling like through a, a tunnel, and then you see the shape, so it's coming up. So you have to change your your thing to match the pattern so you can go through the floor. Oh. And it keeps like you're just, it's continuously moving fast paced like that. Like you're falling, almost like you're falling. You have to keep uh, switching the your main piece to fit through the holes as it's going. So it's kind of like a really crazy 3D like Tetris. That sounds all right. Yeah, so it was kind of fun. But that's a, a download, right? That's not a full Yeah, it's off the eShop, uh, Nintendo's eShop there. So That'd be cool. It probably, it's probably worked really well with the 3DS, but I would imagine that game's going to get really boring really fast. But it might keep your girlfriend busy. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, up next for the PC, we have uh, Men of War Condemned Heroes. This is a PC strategy game. And it, this, these games are actually kind of fun. Uh, you know, it's like a, a World War II uh, military game. But the cool thing about these is you can run them completely overhead, um, like regular PC strategy style. And you can zoom all the way in to your, like, uh, almost in the first or third person view of the uh, soldiers that are fighting on the screen. Now, this game has been done a million times, and this is just another game in that series, uh, but it looks like they improved the quality of how close you can get in the action. Um, so I'm actually looking forward to this game because I've played this, these games before, and I actually like them a lot. So, that's coming out this week, and I might pick that one up. Uh, up next for PC, we got Tribes Ascend. Ascend. Wow. So if you're in, into the Tribes, we got another one for you. Tribes is just a... Broke down Halo. I'm just saying. Whoa. I'm saying. Whoa. Unfair. <laughs> Up next for the 360, we got a game called The Splatters. Okay. Oh, I've had The Splatters. <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, on the 360 as an eShop download game. Now, I got to tell you, and I'm going to be playing a video, I'm going to show you the video of this game because you have to see the video to appreciate this game. It's one of those physics based uh, strategy games where you're like trying to move one object to the other side of the screen and there's like objects in the middle that help it move or not move or whatever but the cool thing about it is instead of just being like a random ball or some dumb object it's like a little like like a splotch of like i don't know goo or paint but it has like a smiley face and it's like a like almost like it's alive and as you're splatting them against the wall they might explode or 
you know, make their body stretch or it's kind of like like one of those slimy things you get in a gumball machine. You can't oh, throw okay, that gotcha. splats. Right. Oh, you know, the splats. When I was little, they were like little octopuses. So You'd throw the octopus yeah. on the wall and the legs. Would... So it's that's basically, you know, what you're playing with. Octopi. In one of those newly popular physics, physics games uh, where you're trying to move one piece to the other, you know, side. Looks really fun. The video looks like it would be uh, funny, to say the least. Um, so check that one out. That one actually might be a, a decent title. And as you're watching this video, I'm sure you're looking at it going, yeah, I'd play that. Um, I'd see. buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Up next for the PS3 and the 360 on digital download, uh, we have the game called World Gone Sour. Mm. Now, uh, this basically is a action game where you have the perspective of a, of a piece of candy that maybe been discarded or fell on the floor. And basically your mission is to get off from the floor or wherever you were dropped that to the person's stomach. Okay. Seems but, pretty straightforward. Yeah, this is just a regular action game, but it's funny because it's in the perspective of a piece of candy. So, you know, you're like a Sour Patch Bear and you're trying to, you know, get you and your others to the stomach. So the it's a puzzle platformer? Yeah, it's, no, it's kind of like a, just an action platformer game. I don't know there's too much of a puzzle there other than you have to figure out how to get to point A to point B. We're so basic, you know, but it's it's funny, you know, a little, little comedy there. It might be cool for kids or, you know, just if you want to play something kind of different, it would be worth the uh, download. So check that out. Um, up next for the PS3 and 360, again off the digital download, is a game called Skullgirls. Hmm. Now, Skullgirls is pretty much just a straight-up fighting game, like a Mortal Kombat game. Um, but with girls. Yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's all girls, it's fast-paced, and it's kind of like a done in like a dark deco so kind of like a hyper anime but more of like a you know the the emo girl kind of i don't even know how to say the dark emo like monster high girls yeah kind of that kind of a style so uh if you want some beat em up if your girlfriend wants to play something that's more her her go all you emo girls out there there you go and for all of you really lonely guys yeah there great you go. game for it's you really too fun. it looked like it was all right it's just a fighting game you know nothing special fighting games are kind of boring to me but uh, if you just want to be down on some, if you're if you're tired of playing more combat, which most of us are, hmm. you uh, might appreciate something different. Um, let's see. Up next for PC, we have a game called Legend of Grim Grimrock. Grimrock. I said Grimlock. Grimrock. Uh, this is a role-playing game, and it is a dungeon crawling game, and it's pretty much inspired by the old school classic uh, RPGs, where it's um, all you see is the front view. You turn, and mm. you're facing this way, mm. and you're facing this way, and you know you get the little pop-up menu that has your inventory, and you're dropping things on it. It's basically one of those, just redone with newer graphics, but it looks just like one of the old school Ultimas, or you know, I think that's right, Ultima. Barge Tail. Yeah. So I don't know. I never liked that style of a game. Oh, I loved those. Games. I didn't because I didn't like the view. I preferred overhead. Hmm. Um, and to me, that was just irritating to play it in that format. I never appreciated those games that much. I appreciate I got, when they started becoming more pulled back and looking down. The, that's when I really started to enjoy RPG. But the old school, you know, ni early '90s uh, view mm -hmm. that's that sucked. Hated it. <laughs> so this game is going to have that. So you know, not for me, but maybe for you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Up next for the PC, we have a game called uh, Naval War Arctic Circle. And basically, it's just a real-time strategy game where you battle uh, enemies using naval and aerial forces. Basic uh, strategy game, uh, war strategy game, modern war strategy game, uh, using just basically only naval and air units. We've seen millions of games like this before. Uh, it's not really nothing special here other than it's in the Arctic. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? Be in the jungle for all I, I give a damn. So that game's coming out in... Uh, you might want to quest for power and world domination. And uh, You don't want to dominate the world? Not really. Not today. So, and finally up for the 360, uh, the last game we got here is uh, a retail release uh, for $39.95, 40 bucks. so you know it's not going to be that great, is a... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look, if you're going to release a game at half, half retail, something's not right. It's either going to be a remake or just boring. Uh, Phantom Breaker. And this is just another Mortal Kombat style anime, hyper anime, 
2D, beat em up, straight up Mortal Kombat style fighting game. Using the Phantom uh, World, which is already Phantom. established in several games previously. Oh, okay. So, those characters and the fighting game. Whatever. And that's it. That's all we got to do. There's not much going on. So what kind of fighting games do you like? I don't like fighting games anymore. You know the last fighting game I actually enjoyed was... Uh... Yep, see? I don't know. Capcom vs. What, X-Men? Is that right? <laughs> the one from like 12 years ago? Yeah. Oh. That's the one I appreciated because it, I could totally just smash the crap out of the buttons and, and actually do something. Like, oh, I'm so great. Yeah. But I don't know. I just don't... I don't like the repetitiveness of learning the moves and then there's people who just like figure out the combinations perfectly where you can't even play right and then there's and then you know that's which is fine and i, I prefer to play you know one player anyways uh just so i can kind of get some kind of story out of the game and you can win about the first two or three matches and by the time you get to the next guy that computer knows you and it knows everything you're going to do, and it can block everything, like, you, it makes you feel, like, I don't know, this big, and it's, it's a demoralizing game uh, genre, and I don't like it. Let's see, you're supposed to be learning and getting better as you play. I like strategy games where I can build an empire, and then just murder the crap out of everybody. Mm. I don't like a game that's going to let me uh, fight, and feel like I'm doing okay, and I'm, I'm actually winning, <laughs> and, and then, then crush the next match, and then totally just crush me, like, <laughs> nope, you don't know what you're doing. I don't like that. You need to play more of those then. Then I just slam the controller and I'm like, you stupid game. And then you're like, I know what I'll do. I'll trick you. I'll become like somebody else on the next match. I'll fight totally different. It doesn't matter. They just, they got you. It's like they're, they're like, the computer's like, syncing up with player controller. Syncing up. Syncing up. Link established. Now it just owns your then, buttons, hmm. you know? So in other words, you're just no good at them. No, I'm great at them. For the first so, couple of matches, and then I <laughs> so you're just no good at. It. I'm only that's really what it comes down I'm to. You're good. just terrible. No, you're just terrible at these games. I'm good for about that's thirty really it, percent that's, of the that's game. That's what it means. The first thirty percent, I'm great. After that, no, it just terrible. means that you're bad. So you know, I don't know. I think uh, they cheat. That's all, all right. I'm gonna say. All right. Well, we're gonna take another quick break, and then when we come back, we're gonna take a look at the astonishingly silly control scheme for Kid Icarus on the 3DS. Hmm. Guys. Thank you for watching our videos on the Pop Culture Network. We do hope that you will help support us by visiting shoppcn.com where you'll find all these amazing toys, comic books, DVDs, video games, random geek goodness, all brought to you at an incredibly great price. Every dollar you spend helps contribute to the Pop Culture Network. Shells and popcorn. That's what it should have. Shell is popcorn. Coming to like you. Like seedless grapes. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Video Game Losers Show here on the Pop Culture Network. Sold. Woo! All right, everybody, we're going to take a look at Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS. Not so much about the game. I mean, we'll talk about the game a little bit, but really the control scheme is what we're going to be talking about for the most part today. Um, the game itself, though, is an on-rail shooter. And the way the game works is that, well, if you've ever played a shooter... Um, on real shooter, you're basically moving through the environment and then firing into the screen, right? Did you say on rail? Yeah. I never heard that term. Like House of the Dead. I think you Where it that. automatically moves you? Mm -mm. Never heard that? Well, it's a real term. I think you just made it up. I guarantee it. All right, so anyway, um, in order to play the game, you uh, when you're flying through the air, you're automatically moving through the sky, so you use the control pad in order to move your character around the screen to avoid incoming hits. Okay? Fairly easy. Uh, you shoot using the L button on top, your trigger. Uh, but then, in order to aim where you're actually going to shoot, you take the stylus and you tap the touch screen. Oh, that's too much. So, you basically are doing this in order to play the game. Moving the control pad with your thumb, tapping the screen. They just had to use that touchscreen somehow. And it, it gets a little cumbersome. So uh, when they, you know, put the game together, you notice it comes in this big box. Because in the box, you know, besides the, uh, the game, you get this stand, the control stand. And the control stand is basically a piece of plastic here, a little ramp with a little spot there, and you put your 3DS system on it, and it holds it for you. 
So you can set it down on the table, and then you don't have to worry about supporting it. Then you can actually set it on the table and play like that. Because how, it's such a that, difficult control scheme. How's that even better? Well, this is, I mean, Phil, it's sturdy. Well, sturdy piece. And it's got these little okay. uh, rubber nubs on it that keep it from sliding yeah, around. Yeah, but you're still doing this. Yeah, but now you're just doing it like this. You don't have to worry about holding it, putting the weight on it. Oh, that's, that's irritating. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> the game itself is a lot of fun. And they've made it so... Playing through the levels again unlocks new weapons. You can take the weapons and fuse them together so that you can get new attacks. You can uh, basically you gamble the hearts that you collect in order to uh, play at higher difficulty when you play through the level again. Uh, and then you get a payout of a higher level of hearts at the end when you make it to the end. So I mean, it's a good game as far as a game that you can replay over and over and over again and level up and build up the weapons and do all that kind of stuff. But the control is really... I mean, sucks. And here's the maddening thing. The game is compatible with the new attachment. They have an attachment for an analog stick on the other side. But the game's only compatible with the analog stick for left-handed people. So that they can then hold it in this hand and tap the screen with this side. It's not so you can do two analog sticks like you would on any other game system that's out today... Instead, the second analog stick is just so that left-handed people can be just as uncomfortable as right-handed people when they play the game. You know what you need? A power glove. I think that would solve all the problems. But this is one of those situations where it's like, okay, you, you made a good game. Uh, you know, the, the technology of the 3D, it looks pretty. It's very pretty when you play it. Um, the storyline's a little cheesy. Uh, but it's it's a lot of fun if it wasn't for the control. Like, they thought too hard about doing the controls. And then, that's when you're flying in the air. Mm -hmm. When you land on the ground, you have ground-based levels. Mm -hmm. And when you play the ground-based levels, in order to move, you use the control stick to move forward, back, left, and right. Mm -hmm. You shoot with the trigger, just like before. Mm -hmm. You aim using the stick. Oh, but on. now, if you want to turn left or right... You actually swipe across the screen oh, no. in order to make the character turn. Turn it off. I'm done talking about it. <laughs> so you get into some of the boss battles and you're trying to like circle strafe. Then you basically have to swipe while you're trying to aim with the thing, while you're shooting, while you're you know moving left and right. You're... So how hard is it? It gets pretty difficult. It gets pretty tough. That looks... That sounds... And that's, that's the problem because you're fighting the controls. I'm stressed as hell. Trying to play the game. So it's like, like I really like I like the idea of the second pad. Like if that second analog stick had been for aiming, so you're not using the touch screen at all. Like like I know it's a touch screen, and you want to utilize it in some way, but I can just as easily. Oh, and that's the other thing. That's yeah. the other thing. Oh, yes. When you get a bonus item, uh -huh. like a grenade or something like that, it appears on the touch screen, so that you can tap it in order to throw, you know, the grenade and make it explode. Except you're also aiming by touching the touchscreen. So you'll just be shooting and whatever, and then suddenly there's a big explosion, and you're like, oh, what the heck? Oh, I just used my power up. So can I just put a little device where I can plug in a 360 controller or something and play it, like, for real? Um, not as of yet. Oh. No. Hmm. So that's kind of the problem. Kid Icarus Uprising, it's, it's got the formula of a good game. Wrong platform. But they, they just... Wrong platform. They Same. overthought the controls. They Wrong wanted to platform. use everything that they had available to them instead of keeping it simple and fun. Good Pick game. Play. Wrong platform. Yeah. So there's a lot of potential here, but they just didn't... Should have stuck it on the Wii, man. Think it all the way through. Should have done it on the Wii. So, anyway. I still enjoy it, but a little wonky. Uh, now, the one thing that is nice for this stand is that this uh, uh, the 3DS now, they've added Netflix... So you can put it on the little stand and set it on your desk and pull up Netflix and have some like TV show playing while you're on the computer, whatever. You can do that. And that's a good use for the stand. Hmm. So Yeah, amazing. So anyway, there you go. That's the crazy controls of Kid Icarus Uprising. And uh, the other thing you have to do is hunt down all the uh, AR cards. That was this game as well. With all those, It comes with six cards, and then if you want more cards, you have to travel across the globe and... Or go to kill go, a polar bear with your bare hands. And... Yeah. Oh well, that is the other thing. Uh, if you go to eBay, 
and someone selling the cards and they took a nice photograph of it, you can just scan that and the game will recognize it. I've got about 50 some cards unlocked now because I just went through eBay, through the listings. Someone took a picture of their card and the Japanese ones work just as well as the English ones. So don't feel bad about that. So they tried. They tried real hard, but just didn't quite think it all the way through. All right, anything you want to add? Well, all right, that's going to do it for today. Hi, Rylan. Can you say hi to the camera? They can't see you, but they can hear you. Say hi. Hi. Come here. <laughs> here, climb through under here. You've noticed sometimes we have these odd edits and stuff going on. That's because our little gremlin here comes running through the... Uh, the screen sometimes. Tell me, tell me, do you like the DS? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite game on the DS? You like the DS? Uh huh. What's your favorite game? Uh, my favorite game is Princess. Princesses. Princesses? What, what game do you play at home all the time on your DS? Squinkies. She likes the Squinkies game. Squinkies. That's right. There's a game. How do you play that on the DS? Tell me, how, how do you play the Squinkies? Can't find the Squinkies. You gotta find the squinkies. Mm -hmm. You gotta mm -hmm. find them, and then what do you do? Collect them. You gotta collect them. It's like Pokemon, man, for girls. Well, it's kind of like squinkies in real life. Find them and collect them. Buy as many as you can. Mm -hmm. Keep their kids in college. That's right. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for this week. Paper. Show us paper. Uh, okay. Well, we're gonna wrap up the show. Can you wave and say goodbye? Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. We'll see you next time. Oh, we forgot the fan corner. Oh, well, raise yeah. the roof. Yeah, we'll do it next time. Raise the roof. Fan corner next time, guys. We gotta go. Thanks for watching. <laughs>